Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I hope this finds you well. Um, this week's Parsha is Vayishlach. So Vayishlach is like the second entry of Yaakov, of Jacob's life. So Yaakov has spent 20 years living in Haran uh, with his father-in-law, Laban Lavan, and his many wives and many children. So at this point, he has 11 sons and one daughter. Uh, it's been 20 years, and he's like, you know what? It's time to go back to Israel. So Haran, where he's been, is in modern-day Turkey. So he starts the trek back to Israel, but he has a realization. He's like, oh my gosh, you know who's in Israel? My older brother, Esav who I haven't seen since I ran from him when I stole his birthright, his blessing 20 years ago. So Yaakov sends these angels ahead, uh, these malachim, messengers ahead to see what the situation is. And they come back and they're like, yeah, Esau's coming towards you too. Um, and he has 400 men with him. So Yaakov's like, oh, shoot. And he freaks out. He does three things. The first thing is he prepares for war. The second thing is he prays. And the third thing is he sends a huge gift to Esau. So how does he prepare for it? First thing is he separates his camp. He has a lot of kids, a lot of people in his, in his crew. Um, and he separates all of them into two camps so that if one should be struck down, the other can go free. So that's preparing for war. The second is he says, God, please watch over me. You told me my, my descendants would be many. Please make that happen still. And the third thing is he gathers up this like huge uh, array of donkeys, cows, camels, goats, like all of these animals to give to Esau. Okay, so what does this teach us? It teaches us that we got to put in our own effort and we got to pray and we got to put in our own effort. But like, what is this really teaching us? So, so I'm going to introduce two, two terms. The first one is hishtadlut or hishtadlis. This means effort, human effort. Um, and the second word I'm going to introduce is bitachon, uh, which means trust, faith, security in God. So this is the example I'm going to give. Let's say that you want to get a job. You really, really want to get a job. So you start sending your resume out to a lot of places. If you are going to put in your proper effort, let's say you send your resume out to 100 places. And then, you know, you've done your work. You've put in your established your effort. And now all is left to do is, is, is you know, you know the, the what will be will be. I have bitach on it. I have trust and security in God. The what's meant to be will be. If you had too much hishtadlis, you would apply for 500 jobs. You'd be like, well, look, God doesn't have my back. I got to fend for myself. I'm going to apply to 500 jobs. If you had too much bitachon, too much faith, you'd say, why should I apply to a job? The jobs will come to me if they're meant to come to me. No, we learned from Yaakov here that it's kind of a balance. You put in hishtadlis, then you pray, then you put in more hishtadlis. So it's a combination of hishtadlis, bitachon, hishtadlis. You're working and praying and working, all these things together. So we learned this from Yaakov. And thank God it ends up working. Um, so, so while on the way to go meet Esau, a very famous thing happened. So Yaakov ends up on the other side of the river. His family crossed the Jabbok River, um, but he goes back to get some small, uh, some small jars they think they might have left. Firstly, if Yaakov and his whole family crossed the river, and he crosses all the way back, you'd think he'd be crossing back for something really valuable. Like maybe it was like a huge chest of treasure or something. No, he, the, the Midrash tells us that he crossed back for a few jars. So what, I mean, what's the purpose of telling us that Yaakov crossed back? And obviously it was important enough that he should do this. There's a, at, at this point, Yaakov's a very wealthy man. Um, he has lots and lots and lots of goats and this and that and money and he's very wealthy. He's a very wealthy guy. So why is such a wealthy guy going back for just a few jars of something? So I've heard it explained that like, it's like a, that the thing that people say, like if Bill Gates dropped a $100 bill and he bent over to pick it up, he would be making $100 in the time he bent over to pick it up. So why should he pick it up? It's kind of like that. Like why should Yaakov go back and get the jars? So what this teaches us is someone, even the most wealthy person, someone who truly has full bitaho and full trust and faith in God recognizes that every single thing that they have is valuable and worthy because it was given to them by God. Because they recognize that you know, there's only so much work that we can put in. The things that we have, it's ultimately up to up to the big guy. So Yaakov recognizes that even the smallest jars were given to him by God, so they should be valuable. It also means that there's, you know, it doesn't matter how wealthy we get or, or how impressive we are. There's, it's bad to waste things. You know, don't be a don't be a waster. Maybe he was uh, upset that he was going to be littering. Maybe he wanted to go back and get the litter. Whatever it is, it shows that he's a good guy. It doesn't show that he's stingy or, or, or anything. If he was stingy, if he was like a bad guy, he would have been like, hey, youngest son, go over there and get uh, and get the jars that we left over there. So that's what that teaches us. Okay, so he ends up overnight across, across the river by himself. He tries to go to sleep, but he's approached by this ish, this angel, this man who wrestles with him until dawn. 
So he's wrestling with the angel, wrestling with the angel. Um, he finally wins this, this struggle, uh, but he still gets injured. His hip socket is, is injured. Um, and even though he's, he's injured, he emerges victorious. So that's another thing we learn that even when we are victorious, uh, it's not like oh, we're getting out unscathed. When we have a struggle, we still have the uh, proof of the struggle to prove that it that it truly happened. So that it remember it, it teaches us a lesson for the rest of his life. Yaakov's going to live. He's always going to remember that experience he had wrestling with the Ish, with the man, the angel, across the river. But before uh, before dawn, Yaakov says before the match is fully over, Yaakov says, "What are you doing? You bless me before you leave." And the angel is like, the Ish is like, "Okay, what's your name?" Okay, if this is like a truly a holy angel. Doesn't he know Yaakov's name? They were instructed, the angel said, hey, go go have a little fight with Yaakov. He knows Yaakov's name, why is he asking? So the uh, the commentary tells us that the angel's asking Yaakov to say, are you still Yaakov? Are you still the deceiver, the trickerer, the, the, the deceitful one? Is that still you? you kind of asking Yaakov to think about it. And the angel says, um, your name's not Yaakov anymore. Your name is Yisrael. Ki sarita im elokim, because you wrestled with God and prevailed. Sar ita im elokim, Yisrael. You see the name where the name comes from? Uh, because Yaakov, the name Yaakov, is associated with a few words that mean like deceitfulness, trickery, uh, you know, not, not being so open. And previously, you know, Yaakov got the birthright, the blessing from his father through being deceitful and, trick and, and, and tricking his father. So this new, this new name Yisrael is an open name a name that is, you will no longer get your blessings through deceitfulness, you will get your blessings through openness and nobility. And that is what this name change represents. Afterwards, Yaakov is like, okay, I told you my name, you gave me a new name, cool. What's your name? And the angel says, Lama Zetishol, why are you why are you asking me that question? Some people translate it as, you shouldn't ask me this question. And the commentary says that angels, the angel is saying that angels, we don't have fixed names. We don't have a Shem Kavua, a, a fixed name. Our name changes based on our mission, which, you know, maybe the angel's referring just to angels, but, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. The angel could also be referring to humans, that our names change based on our mission. Our names change a lot. Um, you know, when people convert, they take on a new Hebrew name. When we get married, we change our names. When people take on a more observant lifestyle, we change our names from something English to Hebrew. When someone is ill, uh, oftentimes they're advised to add an extra Hebrew name to their to their name to give them more uh, more merit. Uh, so names are, are important. Our names change based on who we are, what we are, what we're doing. Names are, are magical. So I encourage you, if you don't know what your name means, you should find out. Okay, so the, fi the final thing that we're going to discuss based on this Parsha um, is after Yaakov and Esau finally reunite. So they finally reunite after this whole wrestling match. Um, and it's a good, happy reunion. Yaakov has his whole crew with him, all of his people in his, his camp or whatever. And Esau's like, why'd you bring all these people? And Yaakov's like, I wanted to impress you. I wanted to, to show, to, to, to give you things. And Esau's like, I'm good. Yesh li rav. I have lots. Like, don't worry about me. And Yaakov's like, well, I have a lot too. Yesh li kol. Okay, so the translation, is, it's, it says that Esau says, I have plenty. And that Yaakov says, I have plenty. But if you notice, it's different words. So uh, Esav says, yesh li rav. Rav means a lot. I have a lot. And Yaakov says, yesh li kol. Kol means everything. Esav says, I have things. I have things that pile up and there are lots. I have lots of things. Yesh li rav. But Yaakov has, yesh li kol. I have everything. It could be a lot. It could be a little. But whatever it is, I have everything. Because Yaakov understands that everything that he has is everything. Beautiful idea. I hope you have a Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much for listening.